Here are 10 things I wish I'd known when I started using Keyboard Maestro over half a decade ago. These tips and tricks will help you make better macros, which in turn will help you stop wasting time on your work. Starting with tip number one, which lets you quickly open websites. So let's say we want to make a macro to open our workspace for the day. So I'm gonna just call this setup workspace and I'll add a new hotkey trigger so that we can test this macro. So this is just a keyboard shortcut that I'll press to run the actions below when we add them. But for this macro, we want it to first open this link in the browser. So this is a folder of some important work that we need to open every day. So I'll copy this link here and come back to Keyboard Maestro. And this is where tip number one enters the picture which is to use the open a URL action. So it's this action here. I'm going to double click it to add it to the macro. And now I can paste in that link that I just copied. So this action will open the URL with the default application, which will be whatever browser we use by default, but you can also change it to a specific browser if you want. So now I'll run this hotkey trigger. I'll press the hotkey and you can see it opens that website in the browser, which is pretty handy. All right, but what if we want to add a couple more steps to this macro? It's trying to set up our workspace, and there's a few other things that we need to do every day. So I've talked about before how you can use the record button. If you press this record button down here, it will start a countdown timer from five, and then any clicks you make, any keystrokes you press will get recorded in the macro. Well, tip number two is that if you hold the option button on your keyboard and press record, it will skip that countdown timer. So sometimes you know exactly what you need to do or there's no setup required, so you don't need that timer. Well, you can just press option while you press the record button and it will immediately begin recording the actions you make. So the next steps in this workspace macro are to open the calendar, and go to the weekly view. So I'll press record with option and I'll come down and open the calendar. And then I'll press command two to open the weekly view to see my schedule. So looks like we're right on task. Now I'll press pause and come back to keyboard maestro and press record to end the recording. And it looks like it captured those scrolls I did in the calendar as well. So I'll delete those. But now we have a pretty good macro to set up our workspace. So I'll press the hotkey to test it. It opens the folder in the background and then opens the calendar to the weekly view. So this is a great start to this macro. Right now we have it set to a hotkey trigger, which means that we have to manually press this every time we want to set up our workspace. Well, tip number three is that you can use something like a login trigger, which will cause the macro to automatically run whenever you log into your Mac. So it doesn't require any action on your part. It will automatically run these actions whenever you log into your Mac, which you know presumably would be at the beginning of the day. By the way, if you want me to personally help you make macros like this to speed up your workflow, you can book a free Keyboard Maestro coaching call with me using the top link in the description of this video. But now we have this macro to set up our workspace and let's turn to something else. So I'm going to make a copy of it and I'll disable one of these by pressing this checkbox down here. And this macro I want to, instead of setting up our workspace, opens an important, important document. So I'll show you the workflow that I want this macro to do. I want it to open this folder here. Then I want it to open the most recent document in the folder and prepare this document for me to begin working. So I'll close this out and come back to the macro. So the first thing we need it to do is open the folder, which it already does. And then we need it to open this document. So if I press the up arrow, in Google Drive, that will actually select the most recent document, and then I can press return to open that document. So let's add those actions to Keyboard Maestro. I'll press the record button, and I'll press the up arrow and return to add those two actions in. But now let's try this macro. I'm gonna run it, 
and see what it does. And it looks like it doesn't open this uh, most recent document like we expected. So it seems like the web browser took a second to load. And before it fully loaded, the macro tried pressing these, but since it hadn't loaded yet, it did not open the most recent document. So this is where we can use tip number four, which is to add a wait until the front browser has finished loading action. So what this action will do is it will wait until the whatever the front browser is has finished loading for at least this period of time here. Now it's a bit ambiguous when browsers finish loading sometimes because you know often they will finish loading but then they'll start loading more content afterwards. So that's why this action lets you enter a time here. It will wait until at least this much time has passed and the browser is not loading anything else before it continues to the actions below. So maybe I'll set this to two seconds and now I'll press the hotkey to run the macro. And you can see this time it waited for the browser to finish loading before it did those keystrokes to open this document here, which is great. All right, so you can see in this document that every day I have to type the current date and then I have some notes below it. So let's add that to our macro to have it type the current date out. So back in Keyboard Maestro, I'll add a new action. And by the way, you can press Command Control A to search for an action by name instead of adding it with the pop-up window here. So Command Control A, and I will search for insert text by typing and press enter to add that action. So tip number five is that you can have Keyboard Maestro insert the date dynamically. So whatever the current date is, if you wanna have that added, you can come and press insert token, then come to date, and there's some different formatting options here, but for this example, I'll select short date. And you can see that inserts uh, what's called a token here. I have a whole tutorial on tokens if you wanna learn more about them, but basically this will just insert the current date. So now if we also add a bit of a delay to wait for it to uh, load the Google Doc that it opens with these actions, then now I think we're ready and I'll press the hotkey to test the macro and it opens the document, waits for the page to finish loading and then it types out the current date here. So you can see it added today's date to the top of the document. Now you notice how I had to press enter a couple times to add some new lines and maybe there are certain things I want to do every day like adding notes, you know, adding some formatting before I have it type out the date. So let's add that functionality to the macro. Let's have it wait for us until we're ready before it types out the current date. So back in Keyboard Maestro, what we can do is add a new action, which is the pause until action. So this is tip number six, to use the pause until action with a key condition. So the key condition here what this will do is it will wait until we press a certain key on our keyboard before it continues with the actions below it. So here I'll press a keystroke like F3, but you could put any keystroke you want here. So this will now pause until F3 is pressed before it types out the current date. And since we're waiting until we press F3, we don't actually need this action here to wait for the front browser to finish loading. Um, in fact, it seemed like it was taking a while, so we could even lower it to one second for the one before. So now what this macro is saying is it will open our Google Drive folder, then it will wait until that loads, and then it will open the most recent document, and then it will wait until we press F3, and then it will type the current date. So I'm going to press the hotkey and run this macro, and now at this point, it's waiting for us to press F3, but I'm gonna do some things first. I'm going to add some notes and I'm going to add a few blank lines. And now I'm ready for it to insert the date. So I'll press F3 and you can see it immediately inserts the date. It runs the action after this pause until action, which is to insert the date. I've talked before about how you can add a 
time out to certain actions so that it's not just waiting for you forever. So if you right click on the action and press set action timeout, you know, maybe we want this to only wait for one minute and after a minute it will just cancel the macro so it's not waiting for us to press F3 forever. You know, if we forget to insert the date or we change to a new document and then we press F3 later, we don't want it to insert that date somewhere else. So if we don't insert it within a minute, it will just cancel the macro at this point. But maybe there is a case like that where you run it and then you forget to press F3 and you can't remember what macros are running or not. Well, that brings us to tip number seven, which is that you can see if a macro is running if this status menu icon is rotating. So the keyboard maestro engine icon will rotate if a macro, any macro is running at the time. So if you click on it and you come down to the cancel action, you can also see here which macros are actively running. So if I scroll down to it, you can see it says set up important document which is the macro that's currently running. And if you press this, it will cancel that macro in particular. So I'll press it and the status menu is no longer rotating, which means no macros are running. Now this naturally brings us to tip number eight, which is to make a dedicated macro to cancel all macros. So I'll call this cancel all macros and I'll add a hotkey trigger of something that I'll remember like control option zero. And then below we can add an action of cancel all macros. It's just a single action. And now whenever we press this hotkey trigger of control option zero, it will cancel all macros. So it's very important to have a macro like this. This should probably be one of the first macros you make when you set up Keyboard Maestro just to be able to immediately abort any macros that either do things that you don't expect or that keep running when you don't want them to. So now if we uh, run this macro from before to set up our workspace and you can see the status menu is rotating, but now I press our hotkey of control option zero, then as soon as I press it, you can see the status menu stops rotating and all macros have been canceled. So now we have a couple macros here and right now they will run if we press this hotkey in any application on our Mac. But let's say we only want to be able to set up our important documents when we are in the browser, when we are in Brave. So the way we can do that is we can come here to the macro group and change this macro group to only be available in certain applications. So I'm going to add Brave, oh, not calendar, we'll add Brave instead. So now this macro and all the macros in this group will only be able to run when Brave is at the front. Now we'd probably want our cancel all macros to be in the global macro group since we want to be able to cancel macros from anywhere. But for certain macros, it makes sense to only have them be able to run in specific applications. So now I'll try pressing this hotkey and nothing is happening. It's not running the macro. But if I come to Brave, now Brave is at the front, and I press the hotkey, then it works and it brings up our important document. Now an additional tip, which is tip number 10, is that you can make this even more specific. So instead of just making macros available in a certain application, you can have them available only in a certain window, which contains a certain title. So if you did something like available when a focused window title contains, we could make this available when maybe we want it to only be available when there's Google in the title. So this window here says Google on it, but this window here, well, it's not Brave, so it wouldn't work anyway, but it does not contain Google. But even within Brave, if there's another window that does not contain Google in the title, like Wikipedia, then the macro would not work. So I'll come back here, I'll add Google to this. So we're saying this macro will only work in Brave when the front window title contains Google. So I'm going to press the shortcut in Wikipedia and nothing is happening. But if I come to Google, Google Docs or Google Drive, and I press the shortcut, then the macro activates. So this has been 10 tips and tricks for beginners in Keyboard Maestro. If you want to learn 10 more, you can click this video here. Thanks for watching.